When it comes to updating your cold card, it may differ from other wallets that you have. It's a manual process where we're downloading the latest firmware from cold card directly and uploading it directly into our cold card. Now, the first thing we need to do is search for the cold card release. If you follow cold card, they will announce their latest release features and build for each model that they have. The latest firmware can be found on coldcard.com under documents and then updates. What we're going to need is a cold card. Today I'll be using the MK4. We need a way to power it on. Optional is a micro SD memory card, less than 32 gigs for some reason, because if anything higher than that, it won't work. An adapter to plug it directly into the computer because we will be transferring that file from our computer directly to the cold card using this micro SD. Yes, you can plug the cold card directly into the computer and move those files using virtual disk with a cold card connected through a USB cord with your computer, but probably defeats the purpose why a majority of you bought this cold card to keep it offline, disconnected from the computer indefinitely. Now to check if we even need an update on the cold card, we can view its firmware on the device. You're going to first unlock it with your prefix of your pin followed by the suffix. It will get you to the home page and we're gonna scroll down to advanced slash tools. Then we will go to upgrade firmware. And from there, it will show our version and the options to import from SD or virtual disk. We'll click show version and we'll scroll down to the bottom to see the latest version. Now to download the firmware, we'll head back to coldcard.com. We'll choose the device that we have. Clicking on it will download it instantly. For me, it saves directly to my downloads folder in which we are now going to save that exact file onto our SD card. You can either copy and paste or drag it and drop it onto the micro SD card after you have plugged it into your computer. We're gonna eject the SD card and head back to our cold card. We'll then take that micro SD and we're going to put it directly into our cold card, make sure it goes the proper way with the metal facing us. It should click in nice and easy. I've seen a lot of SD cards get stuck there. And then we'll click import from micro SD. If you have cleaned out that SD card and only have that one firmware in there, it should only have one firmware to install. And then you will click install. It will walk you through exactly what is installing. And you'll just press the check button to get started. This should take no more than a minute or two. Now, what I do recommend is make sure you have the seed phrase when updating. Um, if, you, if your device loses any power or anything like that during the update, it may wipe itself or even brick itself and we don't want that so just in case make sure you have that seed phrase maybe even test it first and show that seed phrase after you input your pin on the update you'll head back to the advanced tools the update section and then we can view that update that we've installed to ensure everything has worked properly now do you really have to update your cold card i would lean towards no um, Bitcoin's always going to be backwards compatible with these devices, so it's still securing your Bitcoin, you're still going to be able to make transactions. But if there's a feature you're after, or there's a very important bug or security fix on the firmware, I would recommend doing the upgrade. Now what we just did was blindly upgrade our cold card with a firmware that we just installed from cold card without verifying that it wasn't malicious. The reason we are careful to update our cold card or any other wallet is because of malicious updates. This attack vector is possible when downloading the firmware. It could have been a malicious update that could steal your Bitcoin or trick you into spending Bitcoin to somebody else. And the whole reason you bought a cold card in the first place was probably to keep it offline to avoid those malicious updates that would automatically be installed if you plugged it directly to your device. So what we just did was blindly download a software from the internet and install it onto our cold card. A very big no-no when it comes to securing your wealth. What we should do is verify the signature provided by cold card on the latest firmware before we install it onto our cold card to ensure it hasn't been tampered with or it is not a malicious update. Now to verify a signature on a Mac, you need to have GPG keychain installed and you're going to use this link on cold card to download it to your Mac um, if you don't have it. They also have the instructions to do so on Windows as well. First thing we need to do is download this signature.txt file. Uh, you can also open it in a new tab. On your computer we're going to open the terminal if you're on a Mac. 
Now on the terminal, we need to direct the prompt to go to the specific file, in my case, downloads. So that's what I'm doing first. So do so, you put CD downloads, and then from there, it is now in your downloads folder. We are going to paste in this text followed by the name of the file that we downloaded. And this file was that file of the update. And what we're looking for is the hashes to match. So you can see that cold card listed all of the hashes of every single version for the MK4. And we're just going to ensure that the one that we downloaded matches what we see here on that website where we opened it in a new tab. And you can see it matches perfectly. Uh, so we are good to move on to the next step. Finally, we're going to verify the PGP signature. And this we can either copy and paste it into our computer, or in my case, I'm just going to download this file. Now we're going to download that file. It should save to our downloads. Or how I like to do it is just open it in the downloads file. You're going to double click on it and then it's going to import this key. It should say this name here in which we are going to match on our terminal by typing in this text onto the terminal and pressing enter should give us this list of text here that will match this step on the cold card page. Now it will say good signature from to make sure everything's running normal. And it is normal for you to get this warning at the bottom. And that's the final step. You have verified the PGP signature of this software that you have downloaded before ideally putting into your cold card. So that's the basics of updating your cold card. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Happy to answer them as quick as I can. If you want more tutorials, reviews, I have lots of videos on my channel. If you want direct help, be happy to schedule a quick call with you or just message me directly and I'll uh, do my best to help answer any questions you have. And uh, thanks for watching.